Military aircraft have been mobilised to help evacuate towns and fight more than 130 wildfires tearing across Western Canada. A record-setting heatwave has fuelled the fires. Rescuers are now searching for missing people in Lytton, British Columbia. Roughly 1,000 people fled the town, which was almost entirely wiped out. For many, it was a chaotic escape. With just minutes to spare, residents of Lytton escape through thick smoke and ash. The fire front moved so quickly, they had almost no warning before their town was engulfed in flames. All right, so it looks like the fire went out over the mountain and it's about to get everyone that's stuck on that side of the mountain. Me and my dog just got out, but uh, we could see the house literally in fire as I was leaving. Um, I didn't even have time to lock the door. The blaze ignited a day after the town sweltered through almost 50 degrees Celsius, breaking Canada's temperature record. Emergency workers are searching for missing residents as the smouldering town remains unsafe to enter. Today our thoughts are mostly with uh, families that are grieving, that are uh, facing terrible loss, uh, but of course uh, we also have to reflect on the fact that extreme weather events are getting more frequent and climate change has a significant role to play in that. The unprecedented heat wave and wildfires have left the country reeling and worried this will become the new normal. Even if the world wasn't warming, the Pacific Northwest and, and uh, Southwest Canada would be having an exceptional heat wave right now, but it wouldn't be quite as severe. It wouldn't be blowing past existing records uh, or if it did, it would not be blowing past them by very much. And so climate change lets heat waves be much more severe than they otherwise would have been in a world without climate change. More than 100 fires are still burning across Western Canada, threatening other towns. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has convened an emergency response group and promises to help communities recover. For more, let's speak with Renee Bernard. She's a reporter at radio station News 1130 out of Vancouver. She joined us now by the, on the phone. Uh, Renee, thanks for joining us. Um, can you describe for us what happened in Lytton? Well, like you heard in that report, right, it was so sudden. It comes after uh, incredible heat, like close to 50 degrees, which is unheard of in Western Canada. And from, you know, reports from the, the folks in town, it just took minutes. It was the early evening, and before you knew it, they saw the smoke, and then they could feel the heat. And then some reports said the flames were, were traveling like 30 kilometers an hour, just from one end of the town to the next. And uh, they didn't really have a lot of time to respond. Uh, you can even see some footage of some cars at an intersection, and they literally don't know where to turn. Do they turn left? Do they turn right? Uh, it was just a chaotic scene. And we've also heard that people are now not being allowed into the town for obvious reasons. How has your station been reporting this disaster? Well, like a lot of other uh, stations, so we've dispatched our reporter to a town where people are congregating after they have been evacuated. So there's emergency centres where you're supposed to check in as an evacuee to let people know, yes, you're alive, but now you need Red Cross's assistance and you need a home and you need toiletries and that kind of thing. So there's a, a various towns that have been set up such as that. So we've dispatched our reporter to locations like that so she can actually talk to survivors and people who, who managed to escape that day. And of course, this fire comes amid a record-breaking heat wave. We've all been reporting on it over the last days and weeks. Uh, Western Canada's been experiencing. Is it still ongoing? What's, what's it like there at the moment? It's a little bit better. Like I can tell you personally, it was very difficult to sleep in my apartment. Again, this is Vancouver. Like in mid-20s is considered really hot in Vancouver. <laughs> We're talking uh, upper 30s, and it was unbearable for our homes. People had to sleep in hotel rooms. People had to sleep where there was air conditioning. Most people, like myself, don't have air conditioning, and a lot of people don't even have fans and that kind of thing. So we're just starting now to feel a little bit more comfortable. It's now in the mid-20s, I think. And, and, and another thing, too, was that, yes, we had a heat wave, but the, the heat didn't go away overnight. So again, on the West Coast, we're used to having very comfortable evenings. It might be hot, a little hot in the in the daytime, but it will cool off completely at night. Well, this did not happen this time around. It was hot all 24 hours a day, and it was really, really hard to escape.
And it's, you know, the, only the beginning of summer. Renee Bernard at News 1130 out of Vancouver, Canada. Thanks so much for your time. Stay safe. You're welcome.